Tara, and today is Sunday Reads. So last week I finished one book and started one other. So I finished Black Rain by Masuji Ibuse, um, a story published in 1965 about the daily life in the few days before and the few days after the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. Um, during World War II, and it was as rough as I expected. It's written in the style of a, I guess, a journal within the story. The main character of the story, Shige Matsu, is trying to get his niece, whom he's taken under his wing, uh, into a good marriage, but she... there's this rumor going around that she was um, caught in Hiroshima during the bombing, so she has atomic radiation sickness and um, is not someone that should be married, I guess. So Shigematsu undertakes a copying out his niece's journal and his journal to show that she was not in Hiroshima during the bombing. Um, so in this way we get to learn a lot about what happened both directly in the city and shortly out of the city. Um, and just some of the sights that were seen and the feelings that they had both toward the enemy and um, also their own. Like most Japanese novels uh, that I have read, it is slow going and there's not really a big plot, it's just sort of telling what's happening and in that way it took some time to get into and get used to, but once I got into it, it was a really chilling read and haunting, um, mostly because of the way that the author approached telling these things, which was sort of detached. I mean, also from an everyday guy sort of view, it's a, from the point of view of a civilian instead of from someone who's in the army. And there's a lot of talk about the enemy, but there's also talk about dissatisfaction within um, Japanese government and the way things are going. But I think it's a really nice picture of Japanese culture and how um, you know, what they find important and how important the government is and national pride and um, that, that sort of feeling. Um, I feel like it's very different from stories of war stories I've read from within America where the mindset of the people is very different. Um, so that was eye-opening in its own ways. It's a book that I recommend for probably anybody. Um, because it's just the horrors of war and what people uh, will do to other people and like I said it's a little bit slow but it really it's it's nearly perfect I thought I gave it four out of five stars uh, mostly because it was there wasn't actually a story and I felt a little dissatisfied in that way but I feel feel like I might end up bumping it up later because of the overall impact of the story. So anyways, I will probably do a separate review of this book because I have a lot of feelings about it. Um, but yes, if you're interested in reading Japanese literature, um, I would recommend Black Rain, but be prepared for a punch to the gut on that one. I also started Roger Zelazny's um, The Nine Princes in Amber, the first book in the Chronicles of Amber series. Uh, so far... I'm not sure what to think of it. The main character doesn't have much of a knowledge about what's going on. Um, I'm only like just about just before halfway through it, but um, I don't know. I like the voice of the char the protagonist, um, the main character. He sounds very comfortable, even though he's in a weird situation. Even though he's kind of violent, um, I'm sort of I'm sort of into the narrative voice. So. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens uh, later in the story, and I guess I'll be finishing that week. So heading into my to read, I am going to finish The Nine Princes in Amber and start Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut, another um, World War II-ish novel. It's about fiction about the creation of the atomic bomb, so I thought that that would go really well with Black Rain. And probably after all of this heavy reading, um, I will read Miss Bunkle's book, which is like a cozy 1934 English village story, like it was published in 1934, so I'm kind of looking forward to 
relaxing a bit with something like that before getting into anything else um, in my third week. So those are my plans. I also read uh, one short story this week, The Last Surviving Gondola Widow by Christine Catherine Roosh, or Rush, I'm not really sure how she says that. Um, it's sort of a steampunk alternate history set in the Civil War era short story, but I wasn't that impressed with it because it was too difficult to understand when I first got into it with the time frames and things like that, um, but it wasn't bad. I just I wasn't super impressed with it. So I'm hoping that next week's short stories are a little more inspiring. So today's tea is French Vanilla by Bigelow. This is one of my um, favorite teas, bagged teas, because um, sometimes you just don't feel like going through all the trouble of a loose leaf tea. So I like. I really like vanilla. I like vanilla everything, so vanilla tea is awesome. I usually drink it with milk and honey, and it is super delicious. Mm. Um, I also, for the first time in a while, painted my nails. I'll probably put a picture up or something, because I don't think you can see that very well. We have a new pol nail polish policy at work, which, mean, uh, which says that we can only paint our nails pink or beige and nothing like sparkly or anything like that, which is a total bummer. So I've like not been painting my nails at all because I usually did it on like Sunday night or Monday night, I'm sorry, because Sunday and Monday are my cleaning and going out and stuff days. So I would have to take it off immediately. I don't know, it's just too much bother, but I decided to do something today and yeah, I'm happy. Though I, <laughs> I have a lot of cleaning and stuff to do, so that should be interesting later. I feel like I had something else that I wanted to say, but I can't remember, so it's probably not that important. So I guess instead I will just say goodbye. I hope everybody has had an awesome weekend, and if your weekend's not over, I hope it, you know, is awesome or continues to be awesome, and I will see you next time.